Joining me on the show once again is Hector Fajardo. Long time no talk. What's up, bro? Hey, what's up, man? How are you doing? I'm doing well. I appreciate the time. So I do want to begin with this. I keep seeing on my Instagram stories an interaction between you and Danny Castillo. What is all that about? Oh, uh, <laughs> we're just having some, uh, some, some brotherly, uh, some brotherly love here. Um, <clears throat> Danny's known for uh, roasting quite. He's 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 quite the roast king. So he tried to check me a little bit, and then one thing led to another, and then we've just been blasting each other back and forth. You know, some good, some good-hearted fun. You know, he's the he's the veteran, and I'm you know I'm more the you know I guess it's kind of like a a little bit of a a little bit of hazing. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, all good fun. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've, I've definitely gotten a few laughs uh, from all of that. So obviously, let's talk about this most recent win, Combate. I believe it was last Friday. You fought Aaron Vickers. You were totally right in our pre-fight interview. He was going to be a really, really tough dude. Uh, I want to uh, talk about that first round primarily because you dropped him with a shot. It gave me a headache just watching that shot. <laughs> Were you surprised that he he got back up and that he was able to continue fighting? Um, so, in talking about that, um, look, man. Uh, first of first and foremost, Vic, Vickers is tough. I said it from the start. I said it in every single interview. You know, is a very worthy opponent, a uh, very durable fighter, and man, the guy the guy just came in ready to ready to throw down and put on a show, and he did, man. He delivered on his part. Um, as far as that first round goes, um, look, Vickers is big and strong, and and a strong striker so for me I knew I had to start fast um I had a history I have a history of starting off pretty slow uh in most of my fights so I knew that that was probably gonna be the idea I thought I could catch him off guard if I start off a little bit faster um and and I was right man I, I worked on my speed and I just started it everything was landing from the get-go um my, my vision my reactions were on point everything that I've been working on like crazy since uh since february it, it all paid off man. and and that's a huge shout out to, you know big shout out to mike mike malott uh, my coach uh, my striking coach my primary striking coach man we we put in a lot of work and and cleaned up a lot of things and it showed uh showed in that first round first round because right off the bat i got started everything started landing um and he dropped um i was mildly not i wasn't too surprised honestly because i think after the first couple jabs maybe a straight or two i was like okay i kind of had my timing down Mm. Um, and I just let it go, man. Once I went with that up cross and he dropped, I was pretty prepared. Um, I felt pretty good about it. Um, I did rush it and I, I landed like a good six or seven punches in that. I thought it was going to be a, a first round stoppage, to be honest. That kind of surprised me a little bit. Um, and then I saw the ref creeping. The mm. ref creeped. He jumped in. I thought he was going to wave it off. Like he was like within an inch of waving off. And by the time I figured out that he was there, he caught him out of the peripheral and I was like, oh, this is over. And then he backed off, and you can see it in the video. He jumped in, then he backed off and changed his mind. That split second um, caught me, caught me in a little bit of hesitation, and and that was just enough for Aaron, who's uh, I mean the guy's tough, tough as hell. He's never been knocked out in his entire career. The guy had twelve amateur, you know, twelve amateur fights and fought, and that was his fifth professional fight. He had never been uh, knocked out, so I gave him his due credit. Um, as, yeah, man, he. That split second was enough for him to get his wits back, and 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 he powered through, man, and and he powered through, and we just put on from that point after that, I was just like, look, we're just gonna we're just gonna put on a scrap. Let's just let's just go and let's just put on a scrap. I I, I had fun the rest of the fight, clearly showed in the video, but man, um, I tip my hat off to to Vickers, man. He he's one tough guy, and I think I think more should be looked at how how tough or how big of a challenge it was for me, or how much of a challenge I got lined up with. As opposed to like, I mean, I put I put on I, I put on my best performance against my one of my toughest challenges, you know. So and, and it showed. I, I I feel like I handled it, I handled it accordingly, and yeah. and made a statement. I think that that was what I was hunting for, and I made the statement that I wanted to make. Yeah, I wholeheartedly believe that that was a masterful performance, probably your best performance yet. Because once again, as you've said multiple times, I've said it multiple times, he has a he has such a strong jaw. Such a strong team yeah. because I truly believe that if you had landed those shots on anybody else, the timing, 
the, the the jabs even. I think it would have knocked out anybody else. I think I think he's just a really tough dude. Yes, one hundred percent. And 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 think he's he's a big, durable, probably definitely the biggest thirty five I've ever fought. Probably the biggest thirty five I've ever seen. That guy that guy was massive. I mean, he was massive. He tough character, man. I tip my hat off to him, man. I, I mean, it was an honor to get into a slugfest with that guy, especially uh him being you know you're being in Texas, you get into a shootout get shoot out with a you know with another cowboy who's ready to draw fire you know so that was good man that I, it couldn't have gone any better in my personal opinion the rest of the the rest of the round showed it um and and i you know it was good i got moved up to the main card so i got to put i got to put i got to put my best performance you're right that was the best performance i'd ever put down i got to put my best performance on on the stage on tv you know so that was good absolutely now sum up those second and third rounds for me yeah so the second um so we turn man it's like we we talked about in the first interview we we turned the strike like i knew he was a striker but we turned him into a wrestler pretty quick (laughs) um one thing that i will give him credit for he's a much better grappler than um than i anticipated i knew he was i knew he was solid but a i didn't know he's a purple belt and b um man he made some crafty savvy moves in a lot of positions that were like most people I would have caught, like in the guillotine, I had him in a guillotine. Um, I had trouble closing it because he grabbed my foot. Like, like he had a position where I was like, why can't I, why can't I close this? And I'm like, oh crap. He, like watching the video, I'm like, oh, I see what you did there. Like it was like real crafty things. Like even uh, when I got out of the heel hook, he slapped the heel hook on me. I got out of it and I tried to spin out, ended up sweeping me, which was, you know, a crazy little exchange. I ended up right back on my ass. But um, his, his grappling was solid. Uh, second round, I mean, Second round, it, it, man, I just followed the game plan, man. It, it just kept it, kept it on the feet, worked my movement. Um, you can see I got my timing a lot better with the second and the thirds because my head movement was on point, man. I was, I was cutting angles and moving, and um, I really just found my flow. Like, I was 100% mainly just going off a lot of autopilot and a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of reactions, man, just a lot of trained reactions. I just trusted my – I trusted myself to make the right moves, and I did because I was finding a, a, a southpaw, southpaw, you know, and um, and I just used my speed and an explosion. Um, yes, I mean second round, put it on him. He did take me down. He did get a sweet takedown. Um, but again, I, I also used a lot of my takedown defense. I popped up on just about every takedown. Got a couple judo tosses in there. Um, by the time we got into the third round, I I knew I was up three, or uh, up three, up two rounds. Yeah. Um, from that point on, um. Cap kicks that set in. That was money. Um, I, I I had him biting on all my paints, which was money as well. So then that gave me the ability to uh, to put in my – basically work my offense, work my paints, work my flinches. Because like I said, man, from the start, the biggest thing that I wanted to do with, with, with such a good, big, durable striker was to make him respect my striking. Yeah. And if I didn't do that from the start, then he probably would have just tried to run right through me because he's a pressure fighter, and he's a great pressure fighter. Um, so from the jump, like I just had to make him respect my striking. And then that, and, and then in the later rounds, it just him respecting my striking, him biting on my feints and my movement. It was just a perfect blend, perfect blend. Um, and then I just, I'm, you know, I close off the third round, um, with patience. Um, if the finish was going to come, the finish was going to come. But the thing was, I wasn't in any, I was honestly was not in any rush to get out of there. I was, I was having a lot of fun in there. Um, I was just having so much fun. But if the finish would have came, finish would have came. But if not, it it didn't. Um, I was just, I was just, man, I was just hungry to put on a show. Like I said, I was in there with a worthy opponent. He didn't bullshit me at all. Like, you usually get these fighters who come in, they want to come in and start like putting on some kind of bravado, some kind of ego, or like get in your face, or like sell some kind of fake energy. Um, Aaron didn't do any of that. Uh, I feel we both had the same mutual respect. We both really just showed up. Right. We're, we knew we were going to punch each other in the face and we knew we were going to throw down. And I think that that was a beautiful thing about that is, man, I, we had equal respect and it was just, Hey man, I'm going to come in and punch you. You're going to punch me and let's have fun. Like, let's just, let's go, let's go clock in and have some fun. And, um, you know, before, before and after he, he's a class act, man, great class act. And I just, I just had to return the same favor. I love doing that with other people. Um, so that was a pleasant change, you know, another, another worthy opponent who is on the same, mindset just just wants to go put in a show and we just came there like dude we're just gonna scrap let's just see what happens yeah 
after watching that first round, I definitely, I, my gut inclination was that he was definitely going to try to clinch with you, try to take you down. That's something we discussed in that first interview. But I feel like that's one of those things that you proved. Obviously, your striking was impeccable. I want to note that the team alpha male background, I think, definitely shined through in that fight. Uh, and obviously, that's why he tried clinching with you, because he could not close range. And you were hitting him so much, he wasn't able to hit you. He was obviously getting annoyed with that. But I think that that's one of those things that shined through in that fight, that Guys really can't grapple you anymore because if they do, you're going to pop no. right back up. The thing with that is, um, especially being an alpha male, I constantly live in pressure. Yeah. I live in pressure every single day. Um, like in any of my sparring rounds, like I, I work with everybody. So that means the 25ers, of course, the 35ers, 45ers, even some 55ers. Um, I'm always game to work with everyone and kind of adapt my game and change and change different things, you know. Like I've I've spent a lot of time, man. I help I help. Uh, I I've done rounds with Clay Guida. I've done rounds with Darren Elkins. I've done rounds with legit pressure guys. And for me, um, I'm I'm not gonna see that kind of pressure from anywhere else. Anywhere else, no one's gonna give me that kind of pressure. No one's gonna be able wow. to put the gas on me like an Elkins or a Guida. And, and, and like for, for guys, it's like, that's why, that's why I feel so comfortable in those situations, especially in a fight. Um, I've learned patience. I've learned to basically swim in, in chaos. You know, <laughs> I see yeah. it every day, you know, my, my, uh, the Avalos fight showed that too. Um, the Vickers fight showed that. And, and honestly, the more time I get in that room and the, you know, the more, man, I was back in the room on Monday. I was in there Monday. The more time I get in that room, I, I, I said in another interview, the worse it's going to be for people, man. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not stopping this consistency. I'm hung. If anything, this, this dominant win made me hungrier to, to get better and to, and to top that performance. I want to top that performance. I, I, I don't want that to be my peak. I want that just to be the start. So I'm, I'm going to live, I live in uncomfort and, and that's where I'm going to stay. I'm going to maintain an uncomfort and just keep, just keep, you know, Living in these uncomfortable situations, because if I train hard, the fight's easy. The fight's fun. <laughs> yeah. I'm 100%. 100%. So you went back to training on Monday. In itself, that's pretty incredible. But how have you been celebrating the win? Um, usually, like, I like to keep it, like, I like to stay, I like to maintain myself all year round. Um, so nothing too crazy coming off this win. Look, to be honest, food, I just... That's that's one reason why I jump back into practice like so early because I'm like okay cool I want to eat I want to I want to indulge on all the things I I didn't really get to eat like usually like I'll binge for a week a week is good, um, you know I'll eat cupcakes things like that like sweets all sorts of good things like all the things that I didn't get to eat during you know during my camp or during fight week I'll, I'll eat it for a good week, um, but as long as I'm still good to go into practice and still keep functioning and still keep doing my thing um a good week that's that's enough celebration for me um i'm already starting to dial back down uh back down to diet so i'm easing my way back in um because i'm i'm, I'm a i'm a big believer in in treating your body uh treating your body right for longevity longevity is the key uh, you see guys like like faber in there who are still rolling in there with all the prime all the guys who are in their prime years like that's the goal seeing that kind of thing like being able to roll around in my 40s and be able to function like that's that's huge for me you know and, and you know you see it with favor you see it with Castillo, like you see it with all these guys who are still still in great shape um and they set that that precedent so i you know that's that's the goal that's what i'm trying to follow so a good week of beating like a you know eating, eating like a fat boy and but as long as i get to go to practice and get my practice in like that it balances out um and then uh man just start dialing it back down man like i said i want to stay ready I, I stay ready year round man i got this fight on three weeks notice yeah. Um, so I, I want to be able to, to jump on a fight if I have to on a, on a, on a dime, you know, cause I don't have time to waste, man. I, 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 I got to jump on this momentum. I don't want to wait another, I fought February and finally fought on in November. Like I don't want to wait that long. Um, but it's good. I'm going to enjoy the holidays, um, which is great. Still going to stay training, but it's good. I hate fighting. After, I hate fighting after Thanksgiving. <laughs> I shut it down. I shut it down after day. If I have, as I, I, I don't fight after this, but I shut it down. I usually shut it down for the year, and then I'm ready to, like, I'll, I'm ready to fight for, Feb, you know, February, January, things like that. But. 
I got you. I got you. Well, talking about goals, what is next for you? Uh, when do you hope? And of course, you're staying ready. I'm sure you're going to be getting calls from the big leagues soon. But but tell me the primary goals. What's next for you? Um. So, um, it's good. I got to. I definitely wanted to get one more in before the year ended. That was priority number one. Um, and I did. Um, the fight going as well as it did. Um, kind of buys me a little bit of not chill time, but a little bit of like, okay, I don't have to rush to get another one per se. Um, if the right opportunity arises, um, I'm, you know, I might break my own rule, maybe take a December fight. If it's worth my time, then yeah. But again, I'm not going to push it. So, uh, the goal for now until January is to really just enjoy the holidays, but keep training, stay sharp. Um, ideally I'd love to get another fight. February, um, maybe February, maybe another April, March, and then maybe one more before the summer starts cracking. Uh, and then we'll assess. We'll see, assess where, what, what's next. Um, you know, by that time, I hope to be 6-0 and would be awesome going into the summer. Um, and then, you know, big things usually happen in the summer. You know, this, this one little show called The Contender Series might be around. So I don't know, man. We'll see what's up. I'm going to stay ready. Um, I'm, I'm wide open, but I'm, I, I take everything to fight at a time. So uh, ideally, you know, get one, get another fight in February, get another fight in the spring, and then one more right before the summer starts. That should set me up right where I need to be, and then uh, then we'll see what's there. Like, it's good. Combate's throwing a bunch of shows, so they're apparently they're going to throw they're going to throw a lot more, a lot more. So that works for me. So they got my number. They they know I, I bug them all the time. So um, so I'm wide open, man. I'm just going to follow whatever my whatever my management uh, decides. I know that I trust them. They got, they got the plan. They got the right plan for me. They know what they're going to do. Yeah. So. yeah, you absolutely have a great management team. So this past fight was in Texas. Where are some spots that you want to travel to uh, within the country to, to uh, fight? Where are some of the most desired spots? To, to be honest, I've, I've fought, uh, I've done a little fair share of traveling even when I was in AMI. Like, I fought Pat Mix in Buffalo, New York. That was actually pretty dope. Okay. Nothing will ever top that crowd. or Nothing will ever top that experience. Um, I mean, I'm down to find anywhere, to be honest. I don't have anywhere where I'm like, oh, I got to go there or whatever. But in all honesty, it's not so much where I want to travel out. It's, uh, yeah, I want to fight in San Jose. If I could get a fight in the Bay, that's, that's really where I'd love. I'd love to get a fight in the Bay. Um, I know Combat just flirted with Richmond. I was super excited for that. That would have been dope. Oh, yeah. Um, I know Bellator comes to San Jose. If I get a fight at that SAP Center anytime, like, that's on my bucket list. If I get one, at least give me a fight at the SAP Center. Um, I'd love to jump on a Bellator car. Like, I'm not contracted by anybody, so I'm, I'm open to that. Um, anywhere in the Bay, I'm down. Sac, I mean, sac, I mean, fighting at home is cool, but I've been fighting in everybody's backyards. Like, I, I, know. Fresno. I, don't, I don't mind, whatever. Send me to Fresno. I, I went over there. Went to Texas, and I fought the Texas homeboys. So I'm like, okay. Like that does that. send me into other people's backyards to go take them out. Like that's if that's kind of the thing that we're going for, then it doesn't matter to me. But um, I absolutely I love want... that. I absolutely love that because your record has shown you really have traveled, and typically it's not in your backyard. It doesn't even affect you at all. I mean, it doesn't affect the performance no. even a little. Uh, well, the here's the thing, man. I learned so much, and like I said, that's why we were talking about my amateur, like my amateur career. I got put under some serious lights early on, um, and I and I and like. I keep telling you, man, nothing, no, the pre there is no pressure that I've ever experienced like fighting in Buffalo, New York against the hometown boy. That was the most, that was some serious, uh, man, that was a serious crowd. Like, that's why when they're like, oh, you're okay fighting the hometown boy in Fresno? Man, that crowd is nothing like Buffalo, New York. Like, that is the most wildest, like, ruthless location that I've ever been. It's like, it's like, it's like there's, Oh man, it's like, it's like godless country over there. I'm not kidding. Like I've heard some of the most vile like threats and just, Oh my gosh, everyone hanging over the barricades telling me I'm going to die. Like it's yeah, I'm telling you, man, it's all sorts of ridiculousness over there, but I grew so much from that experience where it's like, I felt good there and I was blowing kisses to the crowd and <laughs> pissing them off and things. But it's like, if I could make it through something like that, like such a pressure cooker like that, I'm like, man, Somebody else's backyard is not going to be a big deal. Like, the only thing, like, it's not going to make a big deal. I think the only thing that would probably, like, be kind of trippy, even then, it's, like, going to Brazil and fighting the Brazilian crowd and then them chanting, you're going to die. Like, 
Like I'm like, I'm okay with that. Um, and like, and, and I like it though, you know, fighting other people. I, you win the crowd, you know. I won the Texas crowd that night for sure. Fresno, my opponent brought in 400, four, sold 400 tickets. The whole crowd was pro, was pro, uh, pro my opponent, and I was getting booed like crazy. By the end of the fight, I was getting cheered. So, winning the crowd isn't uh, isn't too much, isn't too crazy for me. Yeah, see, you know what? One of my goals one of these days is to come to one of your fights in person, get to meet you in person. But see, if it's in New yeah. York, I'm not allowed to go because my dad's from Boston. We're Boston Red Sox fans. So <laughs> anything, anything in regards to New York or the Yankees, I'm banned. No way. Yeah. Yeah. No, man. Oh, bu- Buffalo. Buffalo. Man, I, it's not enough. I can. Oh, Buffalo, you're lovely. Let me just put it like a lovely, lovely place. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Hector, I'm not going to take too much of your time. Let's do a pre-fight interview before your next W. The floor is yours. Anyone Excellent. you'd like to thank for this past fight? Man, same, uh, same people that, that stuck with me and uh, hung with me the whole time. Um, first and foremost, Team Alpha Male, thank you very much. Of course, it's my family. All my coaches there, all my training partners there. Man, um, it's evident. You see it. Uh, Mike Malott, give a huge shout-out to Mike, Michael Malott. If you guys don't know, man. That guy is a hell of a coach. He's a genius coach. He's young, but he's he's a genius coach. Like that that's one name that people need to start getting uh start looking up. He's the he's the next big thing as far as coaching. The guy the guy knows his stuff. His his striking, he knows his striking, he knows his grappling. Um big shout out to him. Um another specific shout out to my boy uh uh my boy Sandoval, Alex Sandoval. Um he came out and cornered me too, you know, UFC veteran absolute pit bull at 125 um that, that guy's had my back like crazy you know i appreciate him so those are a bunch of guys from alpha male for sure quick little shout out csa all my family csa um i train there on the weekends train there on saturdays get some uh to change things up and it allows me to uh visit my family at home when i'm in, uh in the area because i'm from the bay area so shout out to them for let, for opening their doors um and letting me train and, and just helping me grow um, of course, Iridium Sports Agency, big ups. Uh, keep saying it, we're just getting started. You know, yeah. big things coming. Um, yeah, man, all, all my fam in the Bay, everyone who's rode with me, everyone who supports who supports me, big shout out, man. Thank you for Combates for uh, continuing to give me fights. Um, ho- hopefully, you know, I call a hall of my house now, man. That's, that's, that's mi casa. So ho- hopefully, uh, toss me some more fights and, you know, I'll keep winning the crowd some more. And, We'll get things going. But uh, th- thanks for having me on your show, man. Uh, it's always a pleasure. want to keep making this a thing.